catching up to where I uh, expected it to be. It feels like every year it gets colder and colder. Uh, with that being said, a lot has happened since we've last seen each other. Last week, the Radder, Radner Model Congress team part participated in a thrilling event hosted at the University of Pennsylvania. Our students performed exceptionally, with Kaya Denhart winning the prestigious award of Best Delegate. I'm proud to share that I also received an honorable mention. However, the highlight of the trip was watching an intense debate between UPenn and West Point, providing our students with a firsthand look at collegiate level debating. It was not only an educational experience, but a lot of fun to see the campus and see what UPenn has to offer. The Radner baseball team kicked off their season with spring training at the ESPN Wide World of Sports in Florida. Their team started strong with a 4-0 win against the New York Wheatley Wildcats and continued their success with a 7-0 shutout against the Illinois Graysale Knights, thanks to sophomore pitcher Austin Havertine. Unfortunately, our final game under the lights at the Braves Minor League Stadium saw a tough loss against St. Francis High School. Despite some injuries, Raptors returned with a commendable 2-1 record, showing great promise for the season ahead. The Radnor boys lacrosse team has had a mixed spring break, facing tough competition in Greenwich, New Connecticut against the Brunswick School, which resulted in a 5-11 loss. However, they bounced back with a resounding 16-4 victory over Haverford. Despite severe weather predictions, the game proceeded at Prevost Stadium, showcasing the team's resilience. The Radnor girls lacrosse team also had a productive break in Naples, Florida, where they secured a win against Gulf Coast High School. Junior attacker Taylor Murphy achieved a milestone by scoring her 100th high school career goal. I don't even have one. <laughs> Our Spanish department embarked on a fascinating trip to Spain, where students explored numerous historical sites and soaked in the rich cultural heritage. Highlights included visiting the nation's capital, capital and the esteemed Real Academia Española, providing our students with insights into Spanish language and culture. But the highlight of the trip was certainly the food. Students went far and wide trying different traditional Spanish foods like tapas and paella. Finally, students have been hunkering down and getting ready for APs next month. And I know that I've certainly been procrastinating in that area. <laughs> With that being said, there's a lot to look forward to. Thank you all so much. Good night. Thank you, Nico. And we now have a special guest. This is part of a, an initiative we've got this year where we have students from schools other than the high school come. So I'd, the school board and the administration would like to welcome Gretchen O'Donnell, who is a fifth grader at Radnor Elementary, to share news and happenings at Radnor Elementary School. She is a student in Ms. Sanderbeck's class. Welcome, Gretchen. Hello, my name is Gretchen O'Donnell. I am a fifth Hello, my name is Gretchen O'Donnell. I am a fifth grader at Radnor Elementary School. I am here to tell you about my school, Radnor Elementary. Currently, our kindergarten classes are enjoying the warmer weather. In math, they're learning about two and 3D shapes. They're learning about poetry, capitalization, and punctuation in ELA. In science, they are starting their planting unit and in social studies, they are working hard on social and emotional learning. They are also getting excited for their Mother Goose assembly, when Mother Goose will come read fairy tales. In first grade, our students are learning about double digit addition in math. They just completed their opinion unit in ELA and are excited to start learning about nonfiction. In social studies, they are working on map skills. Our first graders are also very excited for their next science unit about butterflies. They will watch butterflies grow in their classroom and then release them into our butterfly garden. Also coming up for our first graders is a trip to the aquarium. On the day of the solar eclipse, our second graders took a trip to Morris Arboretum to learn about trees. They're learning how to decompose and adjust three-digit numbers in math. In ELA, they're acting out sight words to get a better understanding and digging deeper into nonfiction features. They're learning about soil in science and geography in social studies. To prepare our third graders for Walk to Wayne, 
They are learning about community, history, and economy in ELA. Our third graders just wrapped up a healthy living writing unit and are starting their first PSSA prep. In math, they just finished their fractions unit. Lastly, in science, they completed their unit on rocks and minerals with a fossil dig sponsored by the PTO. Besides schoolwork, once every other week during recess, there is an art club during re there's an art club. And just yesterday, Mr. Greg Moore, a third grade teacher, won the 2024 Heart of Learning Citadel Award. Our fourth graders loved getting ready for and enjoying the eclipse in science. In social studies, they're learning about different regions of the US. In math, they're learning about decimals, fractions, and measurements. They are also learning about character studies in ELA. They are really enjoying mix-up days at lunch, where they get to sit with friends who aren't in their class. Our fifth graders are getting super excited for Camp Canadensis in May. In math, we are learning about measurements, graphs, and charts. In ELA, we are working on our final text-dependent analysis. We are learning about floating and sinking in science, and we are looking forward to assisting on our last field day. Besides normal school, every day, each class has one of six specials. In library, fourth and fifth graders are working on poetry. In health, fifth grade is in the human growth and development unit. Fourth graders are getting ready for their chorus concert in third. And in third grade, they're learning the recorder in music. In art, second grade is making wind chimes for Earth Day. When they hear the wind chimes outside the school, it's supposed to remind them to reduce, reuse, recycle. Everyone is getting ready for field day and gym, and the kindergartners are learning about coding in IDS. Our PTO is working very hard to create fun activities in and out of school all year round. This year, our PTO has organized activities like Trunk or Treat, Circus Week, and International Week. Recently, our PTO sponsored the production, our fifth grade's production of The Little Mermaid. It was a blast. And definitely don't forget the PTO Smart Run on May 19th. It's a primary fundraiser of the year. There will be games, a one mile fun run, and a 5K. I love being an RES student, and I'm excited for middle school. Enjoy the rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gretchen. I appreciate all those updates, and uh, good luck in the middle school next year. OK, next item on the agenda. I think we're coming up with the report from the superintendent. Dr. Batchelor. Thank you. And uh, Nico, I don't want to see you procrastinate, so I want you to head home to start studying, all right? <laughs> No, no more procrastinating. And Gretchen, thank you. You Gretchen, don't have to. Gretchen, you're stay. welcome to sneak out too. <laughs> you, you're welcome to sneak out as well. Uh, I don't think you've been procrastinating though. But thank you for joining us. I do think I want to join the floating or sinking lesson because there are moments I'm not so sure if I'm floating or sinking as we go through our meeting. But tune in later. But thank you guys for coming. You did a great job. Uh, Superintendent's remarks. I just want to share a few items, and then we're going to get to our exciting. Um, uh, recognition. So thank you all who are joining us for the recognitions tonight. Uh, so before we get to the recognitions, just want to share a few items. First off, our uh, search for our two elementary principal positions. Uh, we are actively uh, searching for uh, replacements to uh, once they retire for next year for Mrs. Ferguson and Dr. Boylan, Mrs. Ferguson at Wayne Elementary and Dr. Boylan at Ethan Elementary. So I just want to thank our parents and community for those members who have come out uh, to give us feedback. We also receive feedback from our fifth graders at each building about the qualities they're looking for in their next principal. Uh, we have a couple of select fifth graders, as you can tell from Gretchen, we've decided we should either hire or we should have them part of the interview committee because they had some just unbelievable questions and insights for us. 
Uh, but if there's any additional feedback, uh, whether it's board members, community members, or tuning in, please, there is a, a site there where you can uh, provide us any additional feedback on the qualities we're looking for. We are planning to have uh, some of our community and our staff involved in the interview process as we move through this um, you know, interviewing process. So I want to give an update for the board and community on that. And then next, just we had our annual legislative breakfast. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Jim Kearney for everything he did to put this together and the whole team uh, and our government relations committee uh, and the board members that spearhead uh, that moving forward. It was a huge success. It was really wonderful to have an opportunity to sit down with local representatives, with our students, our high schoolers present, our administrative team, and talk about issues facing public education. Uh, it was really a, a great opportunity. We're constantly impressed with our students, uh, all that they um, share and how articulate they are about uh, you know, public education, the things happening here in Radnor. Uh, and we also had a wonderful presentation from Mrs. Doyle's class while we were at Ithan, which was uh, just the icing on the cake for the morning. And then the eclipse. Uh, Gretchen mentioned that at others. Um, we were really excited to turn it into an educational moment. Uh, you can notice, and it's, that is not me, but that is one of our support staff, uh, Kevin there, Tao from uh, uh, Wayne Elementary, and the, the, with the white hair, he was Dr. Eclipse. Uh, Wayne Elementary put together a video. If you want to get a good chuckle, go to Wayne Elementary's uh, webpage, and I think you can find Dr. Eclipse's video on what to do during eclipse and what an eclipse means. Uh, but we were really thankful that the school board came together to support us, uh, uh, you know, as we provided glasses for all of our students and staff, uh, K to 12, so we that could participate in this event. Uh, we were a little disappointed by the clouds. Uh, I should say maybe a lot disappointed <laughs> by the clouds. Uh, but if you got out there early and then at the end, uh, you could uh, you could really see the eclipse more clearly. Uh, though it wasn't as dark as I thought it would be. I was a little disappointed. I thought it was going to be darker. Uh, but it was a great educational moment. And thank you to our parents for uh, just your support and trust. There was a, a lot of hype, obviously, in the media and other school districts. And some school districts were doing early dismissals. And what do you do during an eclipse? And uh, I was happy that we came together to uh, make it an educational opportunity. And our staff at all our buildings were just amazing in the, the lessons and the opportunities they provided for our students. And our kids were so great about uh, being careful as they looked up, even though it was such a cloudy day. And then upcoming events. Uh, as our students mentioned, there is so much happening this time of year. This is the mad dash uh, to the end of the school year. Uh, and just wanted to list for our community and for the board some of the upcoming events. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bachelor. Uh, now we're going to move on to the fun part of the agenda, <laughs> the recognitions. Um, the first uh, recognition, I think, Mrs. Duffy, you were going to help me with it. No, I'm sorry. Ms. Lau was going to help me with this one. Yeah, do you want to head down? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I, do you have the sheet on it? Okay, good. I'll let you read that then. Gosh, which way should I face? You, you, you can push the table. I think it's on rollers. You should be able to push that out of your way. Oh. There you go. And if you want, Chase, have a seat. You can come on up if you want while she reads this. Radnor High School sophomore and Radnor Wright Associate Editor-in-Chief, Chase Hevesy, won first prize for a feature article for her illuminating work, Tourette Syndrome Through Teenage Eyes, in the Stu Student Keystone Media Awards. The Student Keystone Media Awards is a contest run by the Pennsylvania News Media Association, an independent nonprofit educational foundation whose mission is to train and inspire the next generation of professional journalists. The Keystone Media Awards is the top student-produced media contest in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they review countless submissions from student journalists throughout the state. The Radnor Wright submits articles to be considered for awards each year and has been recognized multiple times over the years. The superintendent, along with the board and the Radnor community, congratulates Chase, her parents, her teachers, and the Radnor Wright on this outstanding accomplishment. Congratulations. I should have said this at the beginning. Usually after you get your award, so this is for everybody who's here, there's, 
Ms. Mrs. Brennan takes pictures out in the lobby with you and if you want your parents or your teachers. Um, next one, I'm gonna come down and do actually from the podium. I drew the short straw in pronouncing all these names properly, so give me two seconds. Dr. Babson, you wanna join me? Okay, so is this on? Okay, the Radnor High School Radnor, the Radnor High School Radnor Model United Nations Club earned the 2024 Philadelphia Model UN Conference's highest award, Best School Delegation. In addition, 13 students earned individual recognition for their work in committee. Model UN is a geopolitical simulation where students are assigned a role as a delegate of a given country and are tasked with representing that country's positions and arguments on a topic of global importance. The theme of this year's conference centered around examining post-colonial challenges in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, I'm gonna read a list of students. If you could all come up when I call your name. If you're not here, that's fine. Just if you know, give Dr. Babson your name so he doesn't hand you the wrong certificate. Uh, yeah. we want to have them line up back yep. Here. yep. Once you come up and get your certificate, if you would line up in a semicircle around here so we can applaud all of you when you're done, that would be great. Okay, uh, first up, and I don't think he's here, uh, Michael Perella, Sophie Jubilier, Pernia Nasrula, Olivia Divale, Daniel Caper Bersalata. Everybody's studying for the APs tonight. <laughs> uh, Renata Kozlov Kozlovska, Akshay Sethi, Audrey Rubenstein. They are really studious kids. They all are very busy from having done all their Model UN work the past couple weeks. Anna Conan. Yay, Anna. <laughs> uh, he's not here either. Kathan Carla, Dean Goodchild, Blake Steele. Zach Cohen, Finn Ryan, also not here, uh, Nikita Ravi, Michael Tropiano, Caitlin Brown, Vivian Hattersley, Aidlin Morrissey, yay, <laughs> William Duff, Sonia Doherty, Ryan Donahue, you, sorry, Donahue, Claudia Myers, Emma Torres, Commerce Fisk, Daisy Madden, Matthew Townsend, Martina Bersheril, Luke Howard, Chase Carlton, Ishan Patel, Evelyn Zhang, Annie Zhang, Emily Decker, Eliza Goodchild, Anjali Padmawar, Han Cho, Jacqueline Dunn, and Charles Yang. Did I miss anybody? Okay. So the superintendent, along with the board and the Radnor community, congratulates our students, their parents, and their teachers on this outstanding accomplishment. Okay, and the next item on the agenda is another student recognition that Ms. Duffy's gonna help with. Uh, this is for Junior Molly Lindgren. Do you wanna come up? Is this on? Is this on, yes. So the Radnor High School, Radnor High School Junior Maylee Lindgren took first place in the Central League Swimming Championship in in the 100 fly on February 9th, 2024. Maylee also medaled at the District 1 3A swim championships in the 100 fly and advanced to the state championships in the same category. The superintendent, along with the board and the Radnor community, congratulates Maylee, her parents, 
and her coaches, I see Coach Novick is here today, on this outstanding accomplishment. Congratulations. Congratulations, Maley, and I'm sorry I managed to butcher the last name I said of students. Um, next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, do we have any public comment in person this evening? One of the students? Okay. Anybody else in the room? I can start with the recorded comment if we have any recorded comments. Nope. Okay, then we're going to take a second um, and let the student come back in. Talk amongst yourselves. I, well, I was just going to say, I don't want to skip public comment. No. Should we? Okay, we'll give it a second. Can not we do the, can we start with the committee reports? Sure. <coughs> you can start the committee reports we just can. as long I can as you do back, the public right? comment before the voting. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Mrs. Duffy, I, you've got dual duty this evening. You have curriculum and facilities. Yeah. So the curriculum committee met on Tuesday, April 9th at 5 p.m. On tonight's consent agenda, you will see two new student clubs and five um, student overnight trips for approval or ratification. Additionally, we had two presentations from the administration as part of the curriculum review process, the English language arts audit, and the theater audit. The top line, do you want me to go into a top line summary of the, of the audits? Okay. Um, just um, quickly, the top line summary on the ELA was that um, an increased focus on structural literacy, which we've heard a lot from the community, um, and also looking to increase the consistency of instruction and investigate standardized writing assessments at the secondary level. So I think those were kind of like highlights of what came out. And then a top line on theater was that we would highlight the soft skills um, that are taught in the performing arts and then uh, provide um, a performing art pathway for students um, and, and look at um, potentially exploring internship opportunities for them. So um, we are concluding with the audit and then they will move to the next phase of um, looking into new curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. Should we give your voice a break before you do facilities and we'll let, we'll go back to public comment? Sure. Okay. Do we have public comment in the room? Come on up. Welcome. Just state your name and the town you live in or all your names, I guess, if there are a couple of you coming together. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Picked a good night to recognize you, I guess it looks like. I guess. Hi, I'm Anna Conan. I'm Aidlyn Morrissey of Wayne PA. Okay. I'm Annie Sears. I'm I'm Zara Taylor. <laughs> um, just to say it again, I'm Anna Conan. Um, I'm an 18-year-old 18-year-old senior at Radnor High School, but I'm also a four-year member of Radnor Girls Crew Club and also a captain this year. Today, I'm here to speak in support of the board approving more funding for crew. It's difficult to put into exact words what rowing has meant to me, but I can say that it's taught me how to be compassionate, strong, and self-disciplined. It's also taught me how to prioritize, organize, and focus on my academic workload. It's a sport that requires both mental and physical stamina, as well as unwavering commitment to your coaches and teammates. I have not experienced a more welcoming or driven community at Ratner than crew. Crew, as in life, has shown me that while not everything always goes according to plan, I can control how I respond to and manage setbacks. In short, sports is an extension of what I have learned in my time at Ratner, and that is to always strive for excellence and to be committed to your goals. And I know that this is a sentiment shared by my teammates. At Ratner Crew Club, fundraising is a full-time job for us in order to keep the club running. Some of these events include Ergathon, which also includes parent and family sponsorships, as well as t-shirt sales, corporate sponsorships, our annual mulch sale, personal do donations, and a new event that we're calling Night Out at the Boathouse. 
In order to get this money that's essential for our club, we have to miss practices to host these fundraisers, which is taking away valuable team time. For many of the other teams that we row with, this isn't an issue as their sport and program is completely school funded. The unfortunate truth is that right now, crew is not affordable for every Randner High School student. While the club is open to everyone, crew, like every other sport, requires money. Some of this includes money for rent, regatta fees, equipment, and more. And I have firsthand knowledge of girls who have either quit or sat out for a season due to the cost of crew. While we greatly appreciate the relationship that is present between Radnor Boys and Girls Crew Club, as well as Radnor High School and the board, we hope that the funding the club receives can match not just the basic costs of the sport, but also the passion, determination, and success exhibited by each and every rower. I want all Radnor High School students to have access to the same experiences I have had with Radnor Girls Crew Club, and for no one to sit out or walk away from the sport simply due to cost. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate that input. Did you have something you wanted to say? No, just oh, I just heard you. Okay. I, I think that was the end of public comment. Okay. Thank you. And the board often asks me to just uh, respond to public comment. And I just want to say, first off, thank you for coming to the meeting. You're always welcome and very articulate. And we love to see the students at our board meetings. I, I say that on behalf of the whole board. Um, this is a topic we're looking at, uh, and we're looking very closely at it. Um, I believe our next finance committee, I'm putting people on the spot, but at our next finance committee, we will be discussing um, the details of our budget. Um, and it is, what's the date of our next finance meeting? They're signaling to me the date. Seven. May thank, 7th. May 7th, seven. thank you. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't read all the digits, I apologize. Thank you for helping me, team. Uh, <laughs> At our finance committee meeting, we will be talking about um, this year's budget, and we are intending um, to try to help support our club programs more. We do understand that, uh, especially when it comes to crew, how expensive the sport is. Um, and we needed to take the time, though, to not only look at crew, but we're looking at all of our club programs. Uh, and we're also looking at what can we do this year, and maybe it's something that has to be over multiple years, uh, and that's a discussion we'll have at our finance committee meeting on May 7th as we prepare for the final budget. But we're thrilled to have you involved with the, the sport, and I'm thrilled to hear what the sport means to all of you. So thank you for being here. Great. Uh, so I think we'll move back to reports from board committees. Mrs. Duffy, can we hear the report from the Facilities Committee? Sure. The Facilities Committee met on Tuesday, April 9th at 7 p.m. We had Breslin and Site Logic um, come to update the committee on the progress of the design development document stage of the ITHM project. Um, we were to have a meeting today, um, it today that where they would present and we would, for board approval, moving on to the next phase. But during that design development, process, they identified costs higher than anticipated, and particularly in the site development costs. So they're both looking at the building, the construction of the building, and the site development um, piece of the project. And so um, they just, they have requested that they get another month to really take a deeper dive and look at those numbers and come up with some solutions to come back to us to bring it more in line with our $70 million um, initial budget. So um, they are using the month to identify that and they'll hopefully get back to us at the next committee meeting, which will be May 14th at 645. And then we would move on um, hopefully to next month to the business board meeting in which they present and we for board approval moving to the next stage so additionally there are two estimates on the consent agenda one is for the um, pavement repairs at the transportation center and the other are repairs to four tennis courts these are the four tennis courts that were not part of our high school infrastructure project um, i i would just want to note that th these two pieces are really part of an overarching effort from our facilities department under Mr. Morris to really start to look at maintenance of our facilities in kind of a, a, with the lens of repair and restore versus replace. So these are like consistent investments over time each year so that we're just, you know, making, avoiding the big one-time costs of actually, you know, replacing. So um, 
I think everyone in the committee are very happy to hear that and support it. So those are the two estimates that you see on tonight's consent agenda. And again, next um, committee meeting is May 14th at 6.45. It's kind of a lot of time. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the report from the Finance Committee. Mrs. Solomon? Um, thank you. The Finance Committee met on April 2nd. On your consent agenda tonight, are a number of items that came through committee, um, including the Phoenix ABA therapy service contract, a uh, contract for Ms. Christine McCloskey, uh, the contract for Richard Karen Foundation Behavioral Health, also a donation to the middle school to the counseling department. And we um, also received the budgets for the DCIU general operating budget, the special education budget, and the Delaware County Technical High School. We were then introduced to the five board members for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit. And lastly, uh, we received an update on the proposed, proposed final general fund budget. Um, and I'm gonna boil that down to the most basic knowledge of this, um, the administration is currently estimating a potential budget between a 3.9% increase to a 4.43% increase, and they are still working on finding savings in our budget and fine-tuning their numbers, so we will be voting on the final budget in May. So more to come on the budget. Um, our next meeting, as we said, will be May 7th at 5 p.m. in the admin building. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Solomon. I just want to re reinforce your appreciation for those donations that we received from Ms. Cantrus uh, for the Middle School Guidance Department and from ACME for uh, Families in Need. Those are both very kind, generation, uh, very kind and generous donations. Uh, Next item is policy committee, Mrs. Stern. Thank you, the policy committee met on April 2nd. On your consent agenda tonight, you have four policies for second read and adoption, including the policy on the Radnor High School Honor Code. And there are three policies that are on the agenda for, <clears throat> pardon me, first read. And our next meeting will be May 7th at 6 p.m., thank you. Thank you. The last item is the Government Relations and Communications Committee, which did not meet this month because we had the, um, the legislative breakfast. So again, thank you to Dr. Kearney, and a special thank you to Ms. Molinaro, who helped put it all together. Sometimes those behind-the-scenes people are really very uh, key in getting everything done. It was a wonderful event. And, and thank you to uh, Lisa Borowski and Amanda Capoletti for coming to our meeting. It was really helpful. And for um, Representative Scanlon for sending a representative from her, meet, uh, her office. So I think we're moving on to priority action items, or priority discussion and action items. <clears throat> Mr. Pauling, are you gonna come up? Or are you gonna do, oh, these are from, you can do these from your seat because these are roll call votes. Um, so just for the public's edification and for board members since we haven't done roll call votes uh, recently, the process of a roll call vote, these are um, votes that the, end, the organizations that are calling for our, our input require that we provide a roll call vote. And the process is that Mr. Pauling will actually call each of the names of the board members and you'll vote uh, aye or nay when your name is called. So the first item, 8.01, is the approval of the Delaware County Intermediate Unit General Operating Budget for 2024-2025. And the recommended action is that the board approves the Delaware County Intermediate Unit General Operating Budget for 2024-2025 in the amount of $10,984,610 with Radnor Township School District's share also approved in the amount of $79,043.33. So at the April 2nd, 2024 Finance Committee meeting, the administration was given direction to recommend for approval the annual budget for the operation of the Delaware County Intermediate Unit for the 24-25 fiscal year in the, 
the amount of almost 11 million we discussed before with the Radnor Township portion being $79,043.33. And the intermediate unit budget must be considered and approved by each local board at a regular or special meeting. Uh, Ms. Dunn, I have a yeah. point of order. Yes. Uh, as the board member for Radnor Town on Radnor Township uh, School District's behalf, do I have to step aside from these votes or? No, okay. no, not at all. Just making but sure. I, I need a motion. Motion, so moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Do people have any questions or is there anything? I will just say in prior years, we've invited the DCIU to come talk to us um, about their budget and the work that they do. If board members have questions like that or, or need more information, we can certainly do that. We didn't do that for this evening. Did you have anything, Dr. Batchel, you wanted to add? Or sorry, Dr. Babs. <laughs> it's okay. Um, no, I, I would just say that uh, given my work with the board uh, at DCIU, you can always uh, ask me any questions. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks. Thank you for volunteering that. Okay. Um, seeing no further conversation, Mr. Pauling, will you call the vote, please? Sure. Uh, Dr. Babson? Aye. Ms. Duffy? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Ms. Skirton? Aye. Ms. Lau? Aye. Ms. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Solomon? I abstain from this vote as an employee of the Delaware County Intermediate Unit. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Stern? Aye. And Mr. Thornton? Aye. Okay, eight approve, one abstain. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is also a roll call vote. Uh, the recommended action here is that the board approves the Delaware County Technical School Program budget for the 2024-2025 school year in the amount of $17,306,089 with Radnor Township School District's portion being $287,598 for the Aston Fullcroft one half day program and $13,983 for the special education technical program for a total budgeted amount of $301,581. At the April 2nd, 2024 Finance Committee meeting, administration was given direction to recommend for approval the 2024-2025 Delaware County Technical School Program budget, as I just described. Um, can I have a motion to? Moved, so moved. Thank you, and a second? Second. second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Any questions about the technical school? Okay. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Pauling, would you call the vote, please? Sure. Dr. Babson? Aye. Ms. Duffy? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Ms. Girton? Aye. Ms. Lau? Aye. Ms. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Solomon? I abstain from this vote as an employee of the DCIU. Ms. Stern? Aye. And Mr. Thornton? Aye. Okay. Eight affirmative, one abstention. Thank you. Uh, the next item is 8.03, and the recommended action here is that the board approves the appointment of Frank Sill, Dr. Melissa Huber, Hillary Fletcher, Rachel Mitchell, and Rachel Holbert to serve on the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors for the term commencing July 1st, 2024, and ending June 30th, 2027. At the April 2nd, 2024 Finance Committee meeting, the administration recommended the approval of the following candidates for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors for the term commencing July 1st, 2024 and ending June 30th, 2027. Um, unless I have any objections, I'm gonna ask that we vote on all of them as a group instead of voting on in any individuals. So if people would like to pull someone, we'll need to say that when we make the motion. Um, Frank Sill is nominated from Chichester School District, Dr. Melissa Huber from Penn Delco School District, Hillary Fletcher from the Rose Tree Media School District, Rachel Mitchell from Upper Darby School District, and Rachel Holbert from Wallingford Swarthmore School District. District, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Stern, and a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Babson. Is there any discussion to be had? No? Okay, uh, Mr. Pauling, would you call the vote, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Babson? Aye. Ms. Duffy? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Ms. Curtin? Aye. Ms. Lau? Aye. Ms. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Solomon? 
I abstain from this vote as an employee of the DCIU. Thank you. Ms. Stern? Aye. And Mr. Thornton? Aye. Okay, eight affirmative, one abstention. Thank you very much. The next item on the budget or on the agenda is the budget. Uh, this is a, the recommended action is that the board adopt the 2024-2025 proposed general fund budget. Um, the next, I'm going to read the broader description below. The next step in the budgeting process in accordance with Act One is for the Board of School Directors to adopt the 2024-2025 proposed final general fund budget. Therefore, in conformance with Special Act Session Act Special Session Act One of 20 of 2006, the board hereby authorizes the adoption of a proposed final general fund budget for fiscal year 2024-2025 in the amount of $120,354,254 and a millage rate of 15.2675 mills. The budget will be available on the district website at least 20 days prior to the adoption of the final general fund budget on May 21st, 2024. The administration will advertise the intent to adopt the final budget no later than 10 days prior to adoption on May 21st, 2024. And the piece that I should have uh, referenced from the recommended action is that this would represent a tax increase of 0.6346 mills or 4.34% over the 2023-2024 budget. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Duffy, and a second? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Stern. I assume now you have, a, do you have a presentation, Mr. Pauling? Yeah, just a few slides to go over and just kind of a recap from what we discussed at the Finance Committee to put the, the proposed final budget in some context for the rest of the board this evening. Um, Really, this is a procedural budget this evening. As part of Act One, we're required to pass a proposed final budget. It doesn't mean that the budget that we're proposing this evening is where our final landing spot will be. We still have time until we approve the final budget to do further refinement and adjustments to the budget, um, which we'll talk about some of those things that we're looking at, as well as give some historical information of how we got to this point. So back when we started the preliminary budget process um, on February 6th, we presented a budget um, that was unbalanced with a deficit of $849,101. It did include a 5.3% tax increase, which is allowable up um, to that amount through the Act 1 index for the 24-25 fiscal year. We had some further discussion, and then um, at our uh, board meeting on uh, March 19th, we did make some adjustments to the budget um, that are listed there. We, we made an increase in our investment earnings um, based on um, uh, economic factors and with inflationary numbers continuing to stay where, they're, where, they're, where they've been um, month to month and uh, less likelihood of, of Fed rate decreases in the upcoming year. We felt comfortable adding money into the budget to account for that. We also increased uh, our state revenue by about $200,000 for basic ed subsidy and for um, uh, other state revenue as a, a PCCD grant for um, uh, health and wellness um, uh, services that we're providing, but didn't have money in the revenue budget to offset the, the already budgeted expense. And then to balance the budget, we didn't quite require the 5.3% tax increase, so we lowered that to 5.25%, which balanced the budget at $121,187,000. Um, we had a uh, really good discussion at that meeting about um, the budget as a whole, specifically related to the debt for the new Ithan project. Um, so looking at the numbers again and going back, um, I did as part of the adjustment that we presented at the April 2nd Finance Committee, remove that fifth year of the Ithan debt payments that we had built into the budget, which was a decrease of $832,746. And then we did a subsequent tax decrease um, to rebalance the budget at $120,354,254, which puts us at the proposed final budget recommendation this evening at 4.34%. So we're continuing to look at the budget. These are some scenarios at the top in the chart of what we would have to do to continue to balance the budget uh, from the 4.34% recommended increase down to a 4% or a 3.9% and what we would have to make up in the budget somewhere, whether it's an increase in revenues or a decrease in expenditures and those amounts are listed in the, the, the red up above. 
and then what those corresponding uh, tax increases and millage rates will be. So some of the things we're looking at for, for reductions to the budget, um, based on the feedback at the, the meeting last month, I spoke to Mr. Danielli in our transportation department, and we feel we can trim some money out of the next year's budget related to our vehicle replacement cycle, um, that we can purchase some smaller vehicles um, and uh, reduce the amount that we had in the budget by uh, $250,000. We're looking at staffing. Um, as we do every year, but it, we continue to look at that as we reach uh, May's final budget approval. Um, so we're looking at any potential staffing reductions based on attrition. And then we're also reviewing our contingency positions. And every contingency position, we currently have 11 in the budget right now. If we would decrease that, that would net a savings in the budget of about $108,000. Um, so we haven't landed on that, but just to contextualize what each of those positions would, would mean to the budget number. We're also looking at a uh, prescription rebate program called Prudent RX, um, and um, more to come on that at the at the next finance meeting as, as we're working uh, with with some people to kind of navigate us through that. Uh, but we're estimating a, a net savings from that program of about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we may be able to incorporate into the budget. So there there may be some additions as well to the budget. Um, that we're looking at. We did receive our final look rates for our prescription. Um, there was a slight reduction in the claim costs, but we had an increase in our total members. So we have a, a, about 1,550 total members. That's employees and their families that are on our prescription plan. So it's, it was pretty much net neutral between the reduction in the, the claim amounts uh, estimate with the increase in the number of members. Um, that, that's actually good news because we were anticipating the final look to be higher um, based on what the first look and what, what our RX numbers have been trending as. So I'm somewhat happy that we don't have to increase the budget um, for our RX at this point. Um, on the flip side, our medical rates did, did change. Our first look on medical was a minus 1%. Um, that did increase to a positive 2.5%. So Mr. Stitzel and I are still reviewing what that impact would be on the budget, so there may be some money that we need to add in there to account for that, that change on the medical rate. And then as we've talked about um, through public comment and other meetings, we're looking at um, potential addition to club sports and our middle school cheer program uh, that Dr. Weidlich presented at a prior meeting of about $65,000. One item that I just received information about today that's not included up there that may help our budget, um, we do receive money from gaming proceeds at the state level. It's a home said farmstead reduction. Um, what that does is it helps us reduce our tax um, uh, rate that we're, we're proposing um, by increasing our contribution from the state for gaming proceeds. This year, total from the state level there was about $777 million budgeted. The governor announced today they were increasing that to $900 million. Um, so we could potentially see, um, you know, anywhere from two to $300,000 uh, difference in our, our revenue in that line item. Um, that number doesn't technically get certified until May 1st, and we won't have our allotment until then, but ballparking that of what we receive now on that $777 million total statewide we should see some additional funds coming back, which will help us with these budget adjustments and the, the positive and the negative side. Let's keep skipping, there we go. Um, so just to show what this would be from a taxpayer uh, standpoint and the impact, um, the bolded numbers at the top are, are sample assessed values on, on homes or, or properties throughout the district. Um, it shows what the current tax bill is for the 23-24 year based on our millage rate of 14.6329. Um, and then we showed uh, at the bottom, just to illustrate, if we would be looking at uh, the 4.34 that we're proposing tonight, or those numbers that we're hoping to land on that are under that, uh, closer to 4%, what the impact would be on those um, sample assessed values um, and, and what the corresponding increases would be to go along with those uh, proposed um, uh, tax adjustments. And finally, just our timeline. Um, we have to, as you read in the, the, uh, the agenda item, uh, we have a deadline that we have to make the, the budget available on our website. We will have that posted prior to May 1st, um, but that's the, the, the deadline per Act 1. And then we will also have our, a deadline to advertise. We will have more information at the May 7th Finance Committee meeting along with a, a final budget recommendation, information on the club sports and other items related to uh, the budget that we, we need to finalize for that budget. And then we'd be bringing forth the, the final budget for the board at the uh, May 21st board action meeting. 
And so with that, I will open it up if there's any questions and comments from the board. Thank you very much, Mr. Pauling. I, I appreciate you kind of repeating yourself for the full board. It's helpful, I think, to hear it again, but it's also helpful for community members who may not have had a chance to go back and watch the Finance Committee meeting. Um, and it sounds like there was some new information, which is also uh, helpful. Are there any questions? I know the Finance Committee members may have had a chance to have their questions answered, but anybody have any questions they want to get clarification on? Ms. Solomon. Yeah, I wanted to just ask, so by voting on this, First of all, I want to applaud you for bringing it way down already from over 5% to, to where we sit now. Um, by voting on this, um, we're not saying that, right, for me personally, that I'm okay with this percentage increase. Um, it just means that procedurally we're checking off a box because I'm hoping, um, and we discussed this in the Finance Committee and you just reiterated it, that we're hoping to be down closer to 4 or 3.9. Um, so if we vote on this, are we still going with the idea that we're going to still keep looking for savings and hopefully be a lot lower? Or should we, if we want that, vote against this? What is the... So the, the budget's kind of a multi-step process. So we, the first step of that is, is back in the, the winter, we passed a resolution not to exceed the Act 1 index of 5.3%. It didn't lock us into the 5.3, it just said we weren't going over that number. So the next step in that process is we have to pass this proposed final budget. It has to be available for review. It gets put onto the uh, PDE 2028 form, which is our template and is attached to the agenda this evening um, of how we would submit this to the Department of Education after the vote tonight. It does not lock us into that millage rate. We're continuing to do uh, the work that we uh, showed on the previous slides for the adjustments. So um, we will have a number that's under the recommended item for tonight um, based on the adjustments and what we're looking at. Um, so you are not locking yourself or the board into the 4.34%. The Again, it's merely procedural that we're passing the proposed final budget. It gets put out for inspection for 30 days, but we can still make those refinements until we pass the final budget. So nothing gets locked into place until that time. So, but just to clarify, Mr. Pauling, it would be difficult for you if we all just called the vote right now, said 4.34 is fine, and then next month we showed up and said we don't like that number. So what, what do you need from the board this evening so in I terms would, of guidance about sorry. where you need to be next month. Yeah, so I would say the 4.34 is our worst case scenario. So we're gonna try to get that number as close to 4%, if not under, if we can. So really the feedback tonight is, um, you know, where where our final landing spot is. You know, if we, we wanted to go lower, then we have to start looking at, you know, programmatic decisions that we have to make. Um, as we discussed about in March, um, a good portion of what we're building into the tax increase is going towards the Ithan projects. Or from an operational standpoint, we're pretty much where we've been in other years. Um, so, um, yeah, really tonight's more for you know comments and feedback, so that I can present the final budget back to the to the nine of you in May um, with an acceptable set of parameters or where um, the board would feel comfortable with that that final landing number would be. Can I just ask for a point of clarification sure. based on what you just said? But when you say um, there's no need, the need for programmatic changes, that's below a 3.9. Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yep. clarification. So. Yeah, anything that we have listed up there, those are, we try to, to, to look at the things that will not impact students from a you know from a programmatic standpoint and so um, we feel we can we can make those adjustments and still um, land on that number that we discussed on you know if we would go below three nine I think then we'd have to have some further conversation so um, having said that and I don't want you to assume that I'm going to vote against this and it's and I, I don't want you to think it's not because I don't trust you it is because I hope the final budget does end up more like a 3.9. And I want to reiterate that even at um, a 3.9 or a 4% increase, 
your average, completely average, middle of the road household family in Radnor is going to be sustaining a $428 increase, and their total tax bill will be uh, over $11,000. And so um, I think this is a balancing act of, of us wanting excellent schools, which we have and we want to support, and um, being respectful to the people who are paying for it. And um, to me, I still think a 4% or 3.9 is a healthy increase in a time when lots of families are still struggling and inflation is still high and very sticky. And um, so I, I'm going to be voting no on a on making a, a signal about a 4.34% increase. I would not support that. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Pauling or comments they'd like to share? I guess I, I, I have one. Um, just based on our last facilities meeting, we do have a little new information that's occurred since since you know, we put together those three options, right? The three, nine, four, and, and just, I guess, asking the comfort level, or maybe you don't need to answer this now, but something to think about is your comfort level um, with those lower options if, you know, if we hope it doesn't happen, but if we see some budget creep on the building, um, you know, next, even as early as next month. No, that's a great question, and um, I, I felt comfortable with the reduction we made of the final year debt, knowing we have time over the next subsequent years to help phase that back in. So, you know, if the the building costs go up, I've run numbers with our financial advisor to see what that potential impact could be. Um, and again, I think with the budget, it it balances what we would need in the short term. The, the money that we could put towards our other capital projects until the money goes towards the debt for Ethan. Um, but then having time to catch up for what we don't have included in this year's budget. So if there were some increases, I feel that we'd have enough time and based on the Act 1 projections and just being mindful of the overall budget that we, we would have some flexibility in there. I wouldn't feel panicked. Um, if we were going and trimming any more of the, the debt out for the Ithan project, even if there, you know, may, our, our numbers may have to go up based on the budget uh, for the project, um, I feel comfortable with the recommendation tonight and where we're at. I think if we went too far under that, I would start to give me a little bit of agita on how we would be paying for that project in the future years. And I think we need to keep in mind you know, we need to have the institutional memory for next year's budget and the budget after. You know, we're taking on a very large project with Ithan. We're also uh, committed and thankfully committed. I think the board showed a lot of insight several years ago to set up a long-term capital plan to take care of our facilities. And we're going to save the taxpayer dollars in the long run by taking care of our buildings. Uh, but there's areas that need improvements as well. So uh, I think we need to keep this in mind as we're moving forward, not only uh, next year, but the year after. So, Mr. Pauling, just so I can, let me say it a different way. I think this is what I heard you say, but I want to hear it just very basically. We know the projection, is, so Act 1 this year is 5.3. That's the cap on what we could raise taxes. I don't think I hear the stomach for it on this board. <clears throat> But next year, the projection for Act 1 is 4.1? 4%. And the following year, the projection for Act 1 is that we'll drop even further to? Mid threes. Mid threes. So you're saying, though, that your understanding of the projected increases in the cost of the Ithan project and the understanding that we have, I mean, it was no secret I referenced an exec that we've been having executive session conversations about our collective bargaining negotiations, you think we can do all of that at a 3-9 without having to cut anything else? That's, yeah, that's where I would feel comfortable with, yep. Okay, and e recognizing that you may not get the stomach on this board for a 4.1 next year. I'm, I'm hoping you recognize, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
you know, we'll probably have the conversation again next year just to have the reminder that we took out the 832,000 and then depending on where the Ithan project lands, where we may need to adjust on that. Um, but the good thing is it's not a one-year conversation since we're pulling it out of the back end of the debt and we're, we're planning to do those borrowings over five years. So this year, calendar year would be our second borrowing. We do have some time, but we need to be mindful of that as we're having this conversation a year from now or maybe two years from now that eventually where we land on a budget for that, that building and we incur that debt, we'll need to start being repaid. And so whatever we don't build into the budget now, we'll have to make up for. But I feel based on that number and what we've already built into it um, over those two to three years that you know we could, we could phase that in incrementally and, and catch up to it. Okay, and, and just the reminder though that when we lengthen the time for which we pay for something, it costs us more. Yes. So it's not a $70 million property or a $75 million property. It's that plus all the interest we pay and the longer we decide to borrow on that, the more it's costing. Correct. Okay. Now we do have the, the borrowings were all um, either from 28 to 30 years. So 30 years is our max. What we may do to help smooth that are some of the ones that we looked at at a 28 year borrowing. We may push out the 30 just to help smooth that, that annual cost a little bit. But it's not like we'd be looking for going from a 15 year borrowing term you know, up to a 30. We were kind of already there based on the numbers we presented. You know, I know the term was already pretty long. I guess my point is paying over an extra two years costs us more. And we're making that decision for a board 30 years from now. Yes, you're right. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Law. Um, can we go back to an earlier slide? Um, yeah, this one. So I just want to confirm I'm reading the slide correctly. Um, the bullet points at the bottom, these are items that you would, I guess, work with in order to get us to these different scenarios. Is that right? It is, yeah, and some of them we haven't quantified yet, so that's why we, we didn't build it into the recommendation for tonight, um, but these are the areas that we're looking at. Like, I'm, I'm positive we will reduce the transportation budget by 250,000. I've already talked to Mr. Danielli, and we've kind of built that, um, but some of the other things are a little bit variable at this point, so we don't have a final number, but these are the main items that we're looking at to help us reduce that, that recommended increase. Okay, I think you just answered my question. So these are the main items. It's yeah. not a closed set of items. Correct, yeah. yeah. All right, thank Yeah, you. these are, these are the, the, the most impactful items, but there may be some other adjustments that we, we look to make as well. Got it, thank you. So just looking at this slide, to clarify, so when you say, for example, that you have to reduce the budget by $325,243 to get from the 4.34% to a 4% increase, that doesn't already reflect the 250000 of transportation re Correct. reduction. So you're already more than halfway there, yes. just doing the transportation reduction. But on the okay. flip side, we, we will probably need to do some increase to the medical rate. The RX exactly. should be flat, yep. but it could offset some of that. So there's there's some that may be a reduction, some that we may need to balance out, but I think the net between them, will I feel comfortable we'll be able to get closer to that 39 to 4% number. Okay. Especially and with the news today also with the um, the, the Homestead Farmstead uh, adjustment that the, the state provided more money for. Okay. Mr. Pauling, how much was that again, the homestead? So the, the total budgeted amount uh, increased from $777 million to $900 million across the state. For our impact, it's probably going to land somewhere from two hundred dollars to $300,000. Um, oh, okay. We don't have the final number certified until May 1st, but just projecting it based on what we received under the $777 million up to the $900 million, there should be a, a two to three hundred thousand dollar increase, and what it does is it it's it's net neutral in the revenue budget, so it's really just a shift from the property tax increase to a state budget line item. So it, it, we may come back and say the revenue budget is still listed at under three point nine percent at one hundred nineteen point nine million. It just shifts, and what it does is it helps the taxpayers that are participating in that homestead farmstead program to see a reduction and we can make that adjustment to the millage rate because of that that extra money from the state. And Mr. Pauling, if there are members of the community who have questions about the homestead farmstead uh, benefit that they can apply for, is that something who should they call about that? 
Yeah, they can call our office to speak to myself or my secretary, Jackie, and we can give them more information on that. Okay. Um, I think the deadline for this year has passed, um, so they would have to wait until next year to file, but if they wanted to give us a call, we also have information on our website as well, um, but if somebody wants to give us a call or stop by the office, we'd be happy to help them out. Great, thank you. And sorry, just along those lines, if, if a homeowner's already applied, they don't have to apply each year, correct? It Co rolls correct. over. Yep. yep, they just apply once and then it, it's perpetual until the property would change ownership. Okay, so it sounds like we've, we can call the vote if everybody's had their questions answered. Okay. Uh, just can yeah. I just do one sure. more thing? Sorry. Could you go to the slide where you where you do the different households? Just, I think, for the benefit of the public and even other board members. So I'm asking this, am I reading this correctly? So let's just go the middle column. So at the end of the day, what you're talking about between a 4-3 and a 3-9 is, if I'm in the middle column, about $50, right? For Yes. So yeah. I just want to put that in perspective. I mean, I'm. You're. Yeah. I know there's another increase, but you know, when we beat ourselves up over this, it is you know that that helps put it in perspective. And listen, everybody, you know, I think everybody would like to see a three nine, right? I mean, look, nobody wants to pay more taxes, you know. But, but in the in the scheme of when you have to consider all the other pieces, you know, it's it's really not a big jump per household, although it is an increase, so. You well, know, we did a, have this yes. conversation in the, right. in the finance committee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's true, Liz, yeah. except that you're already sustaining no, a 420, it, exactly. $428 no, I, increase. For yes. sure, yes, I, for sure, but I'm just saying the difference. I, I totally agree with you. Dr. Mabson, did you have something? Just a couple of figures. These are very simple, basic uh, figures from the township website, um, there's a page called Township Real Estate Tax Millage Rates. It's very helpful. And there are some figures from the last assessment um, a few years ago. The, so these are not quite corresponding or lining up with these numbers, but um, average residential property value is 667000 It's probably closer to that now. Average real estate tax bill, 20576 Average township portion, uh, 1,500. So, I mean, just to give you a, a little bit of a sense, and I also really appreciate this slide, also puts it into perspective. I think you said the next set of points very well, so I wouldn't even repeat it, but uh, just to kind of keep things in, in perspective, what we do here in Radnor with education, public education, is very important to all of us. So, just something to keep in mind perspective wise. Thank you. So, Mrs. Dunn, I have, I have one comment. It has less to do with about this particular budget. Um, I think lately I've made comments about the federal government <laughs> and my opinion about that. I'd like to add a different component about my, my uh, concern around the federal government right now. There's this thing called the SALT limit, the state and local taxes limit. It's on, uh, I had occasion to be looking at my taxes this weekend um, with the IRS deadline. And the $10,000 limit, which was enacted, how many years ago was that enacted? It was three or four. It was three after 2017. Yes, yeah. thank you, after 2017. So my point is that we've talked about inflation, we've talked about the pressures on people, we've talked about increased costs everywhere, and the SALT limit hasn't moved. And yet people's incomes have gone up, so they are presumably paying more in state income tax because Part of the 10,000 is not just your local, your local real estate taxes, it's also your state income taxes that you pay. And um, it might be time to get a little noisy about perhaps the salt limit needs to be raised because everything else seems to have gone up in life. So one of the things that's impacting taxpayers is not only what our tax bill is, but the extent to which it is deductible from their income taxes. And so, you know, I think about these things from all different ways, and that's another way, um, you know, for us to maybe start talking about um, a, an, an increase to the SALT limit. I, you know, the SALT limit was a big shocker when it came in, <laughs> um, but to the extent that it, it's here and it's not, um, it's not likely to go away, it does seem like the limit should perhaps go up given how much there's been an increase in people's wages 
um, and real estate um, values, and so probably their concurrent taxes, and so the, the limit is making more of their taxes not deductible. Yeah. Not our problem to solve, but my thought to mention. And on another note, if I'll, I'll jump in quickly, is, um, and we've talked about this at other meetings, is we, um, uh, we still have here at the district the, the matching rebate for you know, senior citizens and, and disabled residents that um, can apply for the state's uh, property tax and rent rebate um, uh, from the Department of Revenue that we do a matching uh, portion of that at well, as well, up to 100%. And so um, those income limits have increased at the state level, so the state's making an effort to, um, to put more money into that program. Um, so we do have a number of residents that are applying for, for our program every year. Um, so people that, um, you know, have, have um, you know, lower incomes that are, are senior citizens, we have that program in place as well. So we, we try to get the, as much, as much as we can get the information out about that as we can. So people that are impacted by uh, any potential increase, we do have that in place as well as the state program, which has those escalating um, amounts in there from income limits. Um, that they could take advantage of and they could also reach out to us or look on our website if they, they needed more information on that and um, my secretary Jackie will will and myself I think I've done one or two of them where we've, we've had people come in and um, we sit down and help them fill out their their paperwork and their application and explain the process to them so um, you know there's there's definitely some residents that have been um, taking advantage of that and are very thankful that, that the board put that in place a number of years ago Great. Well, I, I appreciate Mrs. Solomon explaining why she's going to vote against the budget. I think it's helpful for um, Mr. Pauling to understand that there may be people who are willing to do 3-9, but not above it if they don't have to. Um, so uh, at this point, I'm going to ask that we vote on the proposed final budget. All in favor? Okay. I think I have eight in favor and all opposed? one opposed okay that concludes the priority act, priority discussion and action item portion of the bunda of the agenda so now we're going to move to the consent agenda portion um, where board action is required but it's generally unnecessary to hold full discussion on these items and with the consent of all board members they're grouped and approval is given in one motion um, if if there's any item that a board member would like to Discuss separately, please raise your hand and let me know. I'd like to pull items 10.01 and 15.01. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Stern and Mrs. Solomon. I'd like to pull 11.04. Okay. Anything else? Okay. With that, I'd like a motion to approve items 11.01 through, sorry, 15. Through 15.02, with the exceptions of section 11, item 11.01, 11.04, I'm sorry, and 15.01. And 10. And 10. And 10. Well, I started with 11, so you didn't oh, okay. need that. But yes. So, so moved. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Solomon. And a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Okay. So I'm going to go in order of the items that. Oh, so let's call, let me vote on those, please. So you are voting on items 11.01 .01 through 15.02, with the exception of 11.04 and 15.01. All in favor? I see all nine, uh, so none opposed. Um, Mrs. Sol Mrs. Stern, will you start us with the discussion of 10.01? Did you want to move that? Or, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know. What I'd you're like doing. to make a motion to amend the March 19th, 2024 regular business meeting minutes with the following change: that for the motion to adjourn, it was made by me and seconded by Ms. Rosenblum. And with that can amendment, I, I would move to. Can I get them. a second to that motion, and then we'll discuss it? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Rosenblum. So the, the issue was that the, the minutes as, as presented to us had the wrong names on the motions to adjourn. So they just, were, they just need to be updated. Um, 
there any other discussion we need to have of that item? Okay. Can I get an uh, can I get a vote on the amended minutes? All in favor? Nine in favor? None opposed. We I, she that was her starting move was to make a motion. Yeah, and Ms. Rosenblum seconded it. I got it. More importantly, our secretary and our council got it. Uh, okay, item 11.04. Mrs. Solomon, I believe you pulled this item. Yes, I have to abstain from this vote as an employee of the DCIU. Okay. Um, I will make a motion to approve the 2024-2025 Delaware County Intermediate Unit Special Education Funding and Service Agreement. Can I get a second on that motion? Second. Thank you, Ms. Lau. And is there any discussion required? Okay. Then all in favor? I have eight in favor with one abstention. And the last item, uh, Mrs. Stern, you asked us to pull item 15.01. I'd like to move that we approve it, but I, I can't let Mr. Dandrew's uh, announcement of his retirement go unnoticed. We, we don't have to approve it. <laughs> I did actually threaten that. He didn't I, come to the meeting today. That's true. I that's actually true. said that to him yesterday. Yeah, he said he was a little that. tearful when he saw that on the agenda. And I said, you have till 7 p.m. to ask us to remove it. <laughs> and I said, and we could always just refuse to accept your re retirement. <laughs> well, uh, along with, with Dan um, and Maria, who's put in her retirement as well. I mean, obviously, I will move to approve this in a moment. But M Mr. Drew might be singularly the, the employee in the district who has touched the most number of students in his career here at Radnor by, by virtue of the length of his service and the number of students who have gone through the music program, um, he made all the difference in the world for my boys. And I'm, I'm profoundly grateful to the music program and to him and to Maria and for everything that they have been for students and were personally for my children. Um, May 1st it will he be his last uh, high school band concert. May 10th will be his last district jazz concert. I've mentioned the jazz concert in the past many times here before. It might be my favorite concert that happens every year here at the district. And I just wanted to point those two things out on the calendar if people are so moved to attend and that the public is aware that May 1st will be Dan's last band concert and May 10th will be his last district jazz concert. So with that, I move that we approve the item 15.01. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Reluctantly. <laughs> 9-0. Look, we, we have a number of people who have served this district for many, many years, and every year we struggle with the retirements and watching people who we really value leave us. Um, so I hope, I hope they all know that we are sorry to see them go, not just the Drews. Um, it, it's, it's a real testament to the rest of our staff and our administration how long so many people do stay in the district. So, um, and we appreciate it because it's certainly beneficial to our students. Okay, that concludes the consent agenda. We come to item 16, reports from board liaisons and community announcements. The Delaware County Community College report, Ms. Solomon. We have a Zoom um, liaison committee meeting scheduled for next Wednesday, so I know you're all really excited. I will have a report for May. We're looking forward to it. We'll set aside special time on the agenda for it. Uh, the Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Dr. Babson. Uh, just a brief report. Uh, a delegation of us attended the National School Boards Association Conference uh, annual conference in New Orleans recently, and uh, it was a very eventful, informative uh, conference. People were there from around the country, and uh, there was even a, a member of Penn GSC faculty who was giving a talk, um, and uh, that was that was great. So um, I would just say that. Um, so far, uh, it's been 
uh, a very good tenure with the DCIU, and it's been a pleasure to learn about how many great things are happening there, um, especially uh, with uh, some new facilities, construction, and, uh, and developments. That's it. Thanks. Sounds like you're getting your fill of construction. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Delaware County School Board's Legislative Council met last Wednesday, um, and they actually do have some items I'm going to bring to the um, GRCC. They're um, looking to coordinate on some motions that Radnor actually supported in the past um, for gun reform um, and safety in schools. Uh, but I'll bring that to the to the GRCC. Um, I actually liked your point, Mrs. Stern, about the SALT limit, and I think it's something that the GRCC could certainly take up, if nothing other than a letter to our representative and our senator about considering um, whether there are adjustments to be made. Um, and I can certainly suggest it to the council. They do tend to focus on more uh, local and state issues, but I do think that that's something that might give some um, relief to a number of school districts in the area. Uh, and our next meeting, is May 7th, I believe, but more importantly, you will all, no, it's not the 7th, it's the 8th, but the, um, no, seventh. Is the 7th, you've all been invited to the uh, Delaware County, uh, the DCIU legislative breakfast in May, um, and if you haven't RSVP'd for that, if you do intend to go, it's a great session, um, and if we need to carpool, let me know. I'm sorry, I believe it's May 17th. Yes, it's May yes. 17th, yeah. First thing in the morning, down at their headquarters. Uh, I just have a question. How sure. are we to RSVP? Do we? You should have received uh, an invitation in your email. Do we, so we um, contact them directly or do we go through? I think it's Christine Lombrano. The admin, our admin. If you want to let Ms. Klusman know, okay. she is <laughs> wonderful about coordinating things for us. I'm sure she'll reach out and let them know you can be there. Uh, next item uh, is the Pennsylvania School Boards Association. Dr. Babson, is there a report? Oh, actually, that's not you. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Thornton. Yeah, actually two things. Mm -hmm. On um, April 8th, the uh, in-person advocacy day took place. I, I did not attend, so I do invite others who uh, were able to attend to share their comments. Uh, but however, between May 13th and 17th, uh, that same type of event will occur virtually. Great. I, you know, I can chime in there real quick. Um, Ms. B Rosenblum, um, Ms. Girton, and myself went, and um, we met with the same people who were at our legislative breakfast. But there was a lot of, they just um, targeted all the efforts under cyber charter reform. And so that was, um, and I guess, you know, believe it when you see it, but it was the most optimistic I think they've been in years that they actually have a bill in the House and it's really whether they can move it to the Senate. And um, Larry Feinberg, who's, you know, a long-term um, Haverford School Board director who now runs the char uh, cyber charter reform group was really thought that they might actually get somewhere with it. And it's only a small piece, but it is some savings for Radnor. It's small, but it, um, insignificant, you know, it not, in, not, not nothing. And, but for these other school districts around us, there are some major savings coming back to them. And it's just, um, it's, it's remarkable that, you know, what a burden it puts on so many districts. So um, keep your fingers crossed, but it does seem to have the most momentum it's had in years, so. Ms. Curtin, you wanted to contribute? Um, we also learned um, during that day from Senator Capaletti that perhaps if the bill doesn't get through the Senate, that it would be put into the code on the act every year they have to pass Pennsylvania. Um, so that was promising as well. That's great. I'm sorry, I, there was one other item on the Pennsylvania School Boards Association I just wanted to know, remind people, um, and I think we've talked about this briefly in GRCC, and I know people who've been around for years know that every fall there's a delegate assembly. I got a notice, and I believe our board secretary got a notice, um, that it's that delegate appointments are open. Um, they're not due till August 30th, but given that we'd like to take July off and August is so busy, it'd be nice if we could do it fairly soon. So I'd ask you all to check your calendars. That um, Unfortunately, I think this is terrible, but they've moved it to Saturday instead of the Friday afternoon that it used to be, and it's going to be in their Mechanicsburg office, which is also awful. 
Um, and only the first 120 people who reply can come in person if you want to. After that, you have to participate remotely, which I have done the last few years and which is abominable. So go in person. If I have to serve as a delegate this year, I will be driving to Mechanicsburg because you do not get heard when you participate remotely. Chair, Chair Dunn, you're really selling this right now. No, no, the delegate, <laughs> so no, the delegate assembly is actually really, really important. It's, I mean, and that's actually why I'm bringing it up here instead of just in GRCC. The delegate assembly is where the school boards in Pennsylvania get together with our um, representative group, the Pennsylvania School Boards Association, and we set our platform for what we think is important legislatively in future years. And I, I say it's important because when people who've been online tried to participate in prior years, we get shut out and we get pushed so far down in the line of people speaking that our voices aren't heard. They've already moved on by the time they call on us. So it's important to attend in person. Mechanicsburg's not that far away. And each district is allotted a certain number of delegates. So we're allotted three delegates. We usually send three delegates. And that's really important because districts who don't send anybody don't get a say in the platform. There are some very important items that we'd like to see come up that have been quashed in recent years. Um, they've come very, very close to being heard, but there's a lot of kind of political wrangling in that group. So it's a really important role. It's actually really important you get to interact. I think the important piece about going in person is that you get to interact with other school board members. It's very, um, it's very disorienting to per participate remotely. I think Dr. Babson has done that as well with me. And it's, yeah, and so is Mrs. Duffy. And you just, you, you can't get a word in edgewise, you have to, and, and whereas if you're sitting there in the audience, you can at least talk to the people next to you, you can coordinate, you, you really connect with other school board members the same way you can at the in-person trainings, things like that, and I think it's really valuable. It's very easy for us in Radnor to kind of just participate in a circle of Radnor opinions, and if you do this because you care about education more generally across the Commonwealth, it's a really valuable uh, meeting to attend. So just, um, it is, Saturday, November 2nd, so it's a tough time of year, at 9 a.m. in Mechanicsburg. It's about a two or three hour meeting. I think that's about right. Um, it's the LM you, game. What'd you say? It's the LM game. Oh, it's, and it's the day of the LM game. I remember that, yes. So if you're interested in participating, um, we do need uh, delegates to attend. Um, and it will be important because in recent years, some of the motions um, or items for the platform that Radner has proposed have been rejected by the platform committee. So there is a push from the Delaware Legislative Council to try and get people there in person to try and get them heard the day of if the platform committee continues to reject items. It, yes, it is the Saturday. Yes, it, it's not scheduled at a time that indicates they actually want people to participate. I, do I sound like a fan of PSBA? I'm sorry. I, I, I'll get a call. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, w I would say that um, uh, Mr. Moore and I attended a couple years ago, and I believe that you you participated virtually. Um, I, I think that it's really a good experience, actually, to be there and to to meet some other um, school board members from around the state, and to and to get in there and and have a have a healthy discussion. So, y yes, that's the part I didn't sell. It is it's a little frustrating because I haven't been in person in a number of years, but I think. Uh, that's, that's why if I have to go, I will go in person because you will, it is a much better um, experience in person. Um, the next, uh, are there any other community announcements? I know the, are you gonna do the ABC house? Okay, I'll let you do that, go ahead. Okay, the ABC house soiree is this Friday and tickets, your last chance to purchase tickets is tomorrow. Um, it, there, n there are no tickets available at the door. It's the first time they're doing this, so um, last chance tomorrow. Thanks. Any other Saint community? Saint David's Golf Club. Oh yes. Any other community announcements? Okay. So board announcements. Um, on May seventh, we will have three committee meetings: finance, policy, and GRCC meeting at five, six, and seven. Those will be in the ground floor conference room of our administrative building, the district's administrative building. On Tuesday, May fourteenth, we have curriculum at five p.m. and facilities at seven p.m. Also in the district's administrative building. And on Tuesday, May twenty-first, we will be back here for the regular business meeting. No, I'm sorry. This is actually really important because this is the full final board budget approval and it will not be here because of the night we're meeting. It will actually be again in the ground floor conference room at the district. 
So anybody who is a budget nerd and wants to come to that meeting, make sure you come to the right building. And if all of you would come to the right building, that would be helpful as well. Uh, second round of public comment. Do I have any public comment in the room? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Solomon, and a second? Second. Mr. Dr. Babson, thank you. And all in favor? And that's a 9-0 vote. Thank you, we are adjourned.